Good morning and welcome to ARC 313. This is our first video lesson, the Vern Swanson Method. This is video five. By now you should have seen video one on materials that you need to procure. So hopefully all of you have some paper, you know, something like this in a pad. I'm gonna ask that you all put um, about five boxes down the margin, maybe three to four centimeters each. Uh, and then draw in two more elongated ones adjacent to those, about eight centimeters down each, and then add a sixth box below that. Um, you should have uh, some sort of a vessel for the water. You should have at least a brush, preferably two, uh, a pencil to, to do your base media, or a pen if you prefer for your base media. And then some sort of vessel to mix a puddle of color. And you can do, slug, you can do it like this as well. Um, a lot of you are using trays in kits. So you can use these to form your puddles as well in those kits. Um, and then you'll need uh, some sort of a paper towel. Some sort of a paper towel. That's my cat right there. Uh, I usually have a few extra lying around because I'll, I'll need to dab or something like that. Um, and that's it. That, that's all you need right now. You should have seen the second video on the syllabus, and uh, the third video was related to the Vern Swanson method as an intro, and the fourth video was showing some examples of Vern Swanson. So now we're going to get started. So you can come over here, and we'll start exhibiting this method. So here we have our... Um, just get our, our pad of paper from watercolor. Um, put something underneath it so that this sits on an angle, such that everything would rush into your lap if you overpainted. And then over here we have our water and our puddle and our brush. So the first thing you're gonna do is get started by mixing some color and some water. You can just pull the water from your brush right out of your water cup into your puddle and mix it with the pigment. And that's gonna give you um, a nice consistent puddle. You're gonna need this for a while, so get it as wet as you can, but make sure that you have a good mix going so that you can see the color in the puddle. So you're gonna load up your brush with this pigment and water. And the first thing we're gonna do is work on this first box. And you're gonna put a little bead in there. See that bead? And you're just gonna move that bead from the left to the right, down, right to left, back down. And we're just gonna stitch that guy across, always keeping it even and never letting it dry out. If, if you see that that dries out, you have to get some more uh, moisture in there and keep that bead alive until you get to the very bottom right-hand corner and now you see the bead sitting there still. What you need to do is blot your brush with your finger, what we, what we call a thirsty brush, and then just pull up the excess, like so, and then that will dry up evenly. If you, if you don't clean up that bead at the end, then you're gonna get this weird uh, stain which uh, we can exploit later on, but if you always have a stain at the bottom right-hand corner of every wash, then we know that you're not doing it very well. So uh, the reason we have five of these is so you can practice. So just practice moving. It takes a little while to get the hang of it. Some of you will get streaks because you'll let it dry out too soon. You're not keeping that bead moist enough. Uh, some of you might end up having going outside the line too much. It's easy to go in a horizontal fashion. The harder part is to keep the, those vertical lines pretty even. 
when I'm blotting it now, creating the thirsty brush and pulling up the excess. On this third one, I want you to erase half of it with your paper towel. So we'll paint it just like we did the others. And by instead of using the thirsty brush, we're just going to take our paper towel and blot out the bottom right diagonal. So you can see that you can erase the watercolor as long as it's still wet. You can't erase it completely. There's a little tiny little um, grade of, of yellow there, or this kind of mustardy yellow that I'm doing. So this is actually a technique you can do too. If you feel like you put too much paint down, you can, you can um, immediately pull it up in the whole box and, um, and then you'll have like a grade of one. You know, if this is like a five, this would be a one. 10 being pure black, zero being pure white. So these are flat washes. Uh, and, and this is a big part of what we do in watercolor painting, um, especially in architectural watercolor painting because we're constantly filling in materials and walls, um, shadows, windows, all of that stuff is easily accomplished through the Vernon Swanson method here. It's also good if you just want to do abstract painting as well. So let's continue on. Um, just to keep the practice going. So I recommend that maybe you watch this video once, you kind of get a whole sense of what you're gonna be doing, and then come back and watch it and pause it and do whatever you need to just kind of follow along. If I'm going too fast, you can just slow it down. If I'm not going fast enough, you can just move ahead. But the important thing is just to practice. And eventually you'll get you'll get good and go faster. And I've got one more to do here. And you notice, just for practical purposes, I started to speed it up a little bit. You can keep going at that same slow pace the whole time uh, if you need to, just to get, get the hang of getting those beads going. So it looks a little funny when you first pull up the excess, but you can see that it dries perfectly um, uniform. Okay, so so far we've learned the flat wash method, erasure through thirsty brush, erasure through paper towel, and, uh, and now we're going to work on gradients. Unless the first one is dried, which it hasn't. So yeah, we'll go on to gradients. So that's what we're gonna do here um, on these longer ones. There's two ways to do a gradient. You can do it, start dark and go light, or you can start light and go dark. And I'm gonna have you do it both ways so you can see which one you like better. Um, I'll tell you at the end which one I like better. So to start light, you can just take your dirty water actually and just put down a bead, a very faint amount of color, just using the dirty water here. And then each time we'll get a little bit more color in to the bead. You can hear Jalo in the background there. So I'm just adding a little bit more color each time as I go down. And then when I get to the bottom here, I'm just gonna be all color. So I'm not gonna have any water. I'm just gonna go straight from this pigment and get this as dark as possible. So it's harder when you're going light to dark because the darkest part of it is at the bottom but that's also where you have to pull up the excess. So you have to be really careful about not pulling up too much 
of the excess because you want that to be the darkest part. And the other way to go is to start out dark and go to light. So in this case, we're going to go right here with pure pigment, hardly any water. So that'll be the most colorful part of the gradient. And then each time we go in, we're going to add a little bit more water. So this gets lighter and lighter as we go down. And at the end, we're just using pure, pure water, pure dirty water, if you will. But since we're at the end here, we can kind of pull up a lot of the excess because we want this to be the lightest part. So you have a gradient that goes light to dark and dark to light. Okay. I'm gonna let these dry, I'm gonna let these dry a little bit and then we'll come right back to it. <clears throat> 